So usually what would this look like during shrimp and seafood? Right now, you would have about 15 boats lined up starting from over there, going into the village. You know, they would space itself out, enough time for the shrimp to pop back up and catch. And now it's none, none. Grand Bayou was the honey hole. If they're having a great season somewhere else, we're having an awesome season. This was the best. This was, it didn't get no better than that. What's up, fella? How you doing, man? Boy, a long time don't see. What's going on? Nothing much. We're doing a documentary, my cousin. Yeah? yeah. On what? On us, uh, the fishing light of us. What do you think about it? Uh, we gonna survive? Why not? We gonna survive or what? <laughs> Ever since I was little, we would wait by grandma for the high tide to come up. And when the good tide would come, we was always anxious to run to the dish to see who spot the crab. <laughs> Then my dad introduced shrimping. When we became teenagers, he stopped coming with us. Next thing you know, we was out there by ourselves. We gave us opportunity to be out there by ourselves. It's my dad's camp. The old boat there is named the Wake. I had some of my best catches on that boat. back up pretty bad. We hauled shells out here. This was a bulkhead that we put up, and now the salt water's eroding. This was high land. I can remember I caught so much shrimp up the body, I had the little boat. I came and delivered a catch three times, offloaded, and I mean crowned the dock three times. And I would go back and get some more, and they would do the help sorting it out, sorting it out. We, we would line up and take a turn up the body. I think we have 13 acres. If you look at it, 13 acres from the back of the bunker to the, to the back. In the five years I planted watermelon here, they all popped up, but I, I didn't have time to irrigate it. Now the uh, fishing is going bad, I think we need to maybe consider this as a more primary thing, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. When they built the levee, they stopped all the fresh water from dumping onto this side of the levee. On the marsh side, it became salt water which the brownies, the Brazilian shrimp, it thrives in salt water. And back here became a, a unique place for it. We can catch 3,000 pounds in maybe six hours. So when they put the siphon right up the road, it flooded it with fresh water, and it wiped out the brown seed. But it made the white shrimp season better. So it swapped from being a brownie season to more a white shrimp season. When they first started about putting a diversion down here, I was saying it can help us. Outside the bayou, the salinity was on the high side. The fresh water, we can use some if they manage it. But if they're coming on the scale of what they're telling me, I'm realizing it's way too much. I'll tell you what, the first day of trawling season open, I caught the net in the wheel. I jumped yeah. in the water to take the webbin out. I thought it was in the river. That's how fresh the water was. Right. That's how come all the horses in the back of Empire and Brazil yeah, dying. Yeah, I know First that. Floor. Right now, we're hitting the record flood with the river, and it's already changing our fishing industry. It's having an impact of the size of a Katrina to us. We have a crop that we can't even sell. The shrimp is small enough to fit on a quarter, and you got room to see the rim of the quarter.
If fishing keep declining, I have two other options that I will be venturing into. Some farming on the land or running tug for my brother. We started off with it as a shrimp boat. The first job of the Danielle Monique, it still had the skimmer frames on it for the shrimp. From there, he grew to five boats. He's got the Danielle Monique, the Uncle Robert, the Uncle Blue, the Silver Dollar, the Mr. Joe, the Miss Elma, and, what you, and the Uncle John. Washer and dryer. Who does the cooking? We, we, everybody takes a turn, and whoever turns out the best is be nominated to cook from then on. And who's the best cook? Um, second living quarters right behind you. Another living quarters. I prefer fishing over the tug, but, uh, you know, sometimes we got to give it up to make ends meet, you know? I would always keep my boat. My mind would always be... When can I go back to commercial fishing? It's not, I'm gonna stay here. Traveling far to the, for the catch, that's one of my biggest fears of fixing to come happening to me with the fresh water coming on from fishing in the bays and bayou mostly. Sooner or later, we'll start having to fish the Gulf and you can't run from every storm. Eventually, you're going to get caught in one. Do you remember, remember what I used to tell you on the boat? What's the most important thing? Uh, to follow the order, and what do you say? Aye, aye, Captain? Yep. I think with the larger boat, we can go go more places. I think we'll be successful enough to stay stay shrimping, but we'll, we'll see what happens, you know. And that, that's a ticket to get on the boat, Joe. Yeah. Oh, there was a time. It's kind of hard right now, but I'm gonna try to go see if I can managed to make ends meet shrimping. Danced like no one was watching. Some kids don't even know what their parent does for a living. And that's what I love about the commercial fishing industry. It, it brings you, you together. Not a word I've used, though I should hey, Joe, back stop. All right. Sometimes you mess me up back here when he steers up there. Because it works together. Everybody came and lived with us to go shrimping with my dad during the summer. All the kids would come to my house. Back then, we had winches to pick up the frame on the boat, but we didn't have winches to pick up the tail. And so we would get together and we would lift it. And I remember when we got a little older, we'd tell my dad, well, why you don't put winches? Well, if I get winches, I ain't going to need y'all. As it got modern, we got less cash, though. We had way more cash back then. Hey, my baby, look at it. That's the white shrimp. These are the brownies. I don't want bad for my kids. So what I see today, I would say no, I wouldn't want them. Shrimping? But in my heart, for what it gave to me. What's beneath the way? Yes, I want them in it. I want them in nothing else. But we have to make changes. We got to be willing to adapt and change and do different things. Oh, there was a time. Oh, what kind of boat we gonna call it? What we gonna call it? That Savannah Road? The Joseph boat. The Joseph boat? Uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. We're gonna see how well we do, because if it's gonna be pretty, we'll name it the Savannah Road. But if it's gonna stay like it is, we're gonna call it the Joe boat. Hey, you gonna start eating shrimp or what? Oh, no. Oh, no. Not a word I'd use. Oh, I should have backed away. Putting the land back is part of keeping our livelihood. We need the land to come back just as well as we need the salinity level to stay the same. We can all be fishing. That's a white trout. 
Yeah, come here, come here. Hey, give it me. I'm gonna show you the difference. One has freckles, one don't. Huh? <laughs> when we went on our little maiden board, we seen a lot of white shrimp with the brown shrimp. I'm thinking we might have the big boat at the right time to catch the mother load and, and, and pull through everything. A fisherman always has hope. He's got to have hope. That's what keeps us going. You wake up every morning trying to think today's another day. Let's go get him. What's beneath the way? What's beneath the waves? Thank you.